by transcription. The Mutual Broadcasting System proudly presents Mr. District Attorney. District Attorney, Champion of the People, Defender of Truth, Guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Mr. District Attorney, transcribed, starring Jay Justin in the title role, Len Doyle as Harrington, and Vicki Bola as Miss Miller. And it shall be my duty as District Attorney, not only to prosecute to the limit of the law, all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. In a moment, Mr. District Attorney, but first... You know, one of the best ways to send food and clothing abroad is through care. This way is efficient, economical, and on a person-to-person basis. For care offers a wide variety of packages to fill many needs. There's the food package, which is designed to supplement the rations of a family of four for a month. The contents are chosen to meet most basic shortages and to combine with available foods to make nationally preferred dishes. You know, you can send a parcel that contains enough food to feed a baby for one month. And each care package is delivered to the family chosen by you. If you do not know someone abroad you would like to help, you may designate a category, such as a French orphan or Greek farmer. Delivery of your package is quick. Orders placed in the U.S. or air cargo to designated countries where deliveries are made from local care warehouses. Signed receipts obtained upon delivery are mailed back to you. For further information about care packages, contact your nearest care office. This message is brought to you as a public service. Just a minute, I'm coming. Yes, what can... Mother. Surprise, kid. Trixie, oh, come in. Why don't you make yourself to home? <laughs> Thanks, kid, I will. But... Trixie... Good grief, look at you. You're even skinnier than I thought. And what's this Mr. and Mrs. Taylor routine on the door? I chased all over town finding you, Nora. Uh, I, I'm married. Your what? Ed, my husband's at work. He'd be... Stop mumbling, child, and stop gaping, will you? It's me, all right. So you're married. Legal. Trixie, you can't come here like this. You just well, can't. Well, I must say that's a fine way to greet your mother. And me coming straight here the minute they slammed the doors behind me. Oh, I, I didn't know. I hadn't kept track. <laughs> Ever hear a good behavior? You just keep your nose clean up there and they let you out early. Oh, I'm on pro, sure, but that's a cinch. I can con my way through that like a breeze. On probation? Yes, probation. That's what they call it. I got to report to some monkey to prove I'm going straight. Look, Trissy, you can't stay here. You, you don't understand. Ed is... Ed? Oh, that's the sucker you hooked, I think. Don't you see? Ed is kind of... You uh, know all about your sweet old mother, kid? My mother is dead. I ought to bust you in the lip for that one. So you didn't tell him, huh? How long you been hitched? We were married in 1950. What's his racket? Does he work? He drives a milk wagon. A milk wagon? What's the angle? There isn't any angle. We furnished this place on part of his savings. We put most of it in a bank, so we... (laughs) You wouldn't understand. Did you tell him your old lady was in stir? I just never mentioned you. Trusting dope, isn't he? But you didn't tell him I was dead. I just didn't say anything. What time do you do home? Tonight, 6.30 usually. Good. That gives us a couple of hours to dope out something to tell him. Trixie, you can't stay here, do you hear me? You can't. Now, now, stop yapping, will you? I can handle your Ed, all right. And, oh, you better drop that Trixie routine. From now on, it's mother. And mothers come home to stay. passing of the celebrated remark made by Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes when in his decision in the Supreme Court he said quote 
Say, I'll have to find that quote for you, Miss Miller. It's in volume 23, I believe. 23 to 90. I'll have it brought in from the library, Chief. All right, fine. Oh, you busy, Chief? Oh, come in, Harrington. I think we'll give it up for the moment, Miss Miller. Right, Chief. I'll get this much uh, typed up this afternoon. Oh, something important, Chief? I can no, come back. Oh, or... it's nothing special. Just a speech for the university. Why, it is, too. Mm-hmm. Haven't you heard, Harrington? The Chief's going to talk to a whole convention of criminal lawyers. What? Yes, and you think I look dignified enough for it, Harrington? <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure didn't in that baseball game at the picnic no. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> How's the old back this morning? Well, the phrase, I think, is, oh, my aching back. <laughs> <laughs> boy, it's appropriate. <laughs> I'm afraid my pitching days are over. Oh, boy, you ought to see Brophy. Yeah. He's tied up like that escape artist they used to throw into Hudson River. <laughs> oh, Houdini. Oh, thank <laughs> you, Miss oh, Miller. I'm I'm surprised you remember. <laughs> oh, oh, that reminds me about Brophy, I mean. Yes? Uh, guess who turned up on the probation list this morning, Chief? Mm. I had her assigned to me, too. This morning? Well, I haven't seen the Chief. Trixie Norris. Norris? Oh, Chief, you remember that old trouble-proof Trixie? Got the itchiest fingers in town? She went up on a dead right when we cleaned out Lippy the fence. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. So she's out, is she? Yeah, going straight, she says. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've heard that before, too. Trixie couldn't go straight if she was riding up in an elevator. Well, give her a chance anyway, Harrington. Oh, well, you know me, Chief. I won't hound her, but I ain't letting her far out of my sight either. She'll be up to something before long. You wait and see. Dear boy, you look tired. Let me get to your slippers, huh? Oh, don't bother, Mother Norris. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn in. Oh, now, Ed, if you and Nora have something planned, don't let me interfere. I wouldn't get in your way for the world. You? Why, we're glad you're here, Mother. Well, you're so young, acting, and spry. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just like I was telling the boys down at the dairy. I said, Ed, you want to go to a movie? Oh, you got the dishes all done, Nora? To a movie, indeed. Ed's going to get a good night's sleep, aren't you, son? Well, I, I sure could use it, Mother. Oh, I have to get up awful early. But now, uh, you just run along to bed, and I'll see that the house is just as quiet as a mouse. Uh-huh. Oh, not you, Nora, dear. Mother wants to have a little talk with you. Talk about what? Just uh, a little things, dear. Uh, say good night to Ed now. Well, good night, honey. Night, Mother Mora. Good night, dear boy. Sleep tight. Good night. Ah, of all the squares. Trixie, I insist that you get up. And if you call me Mother Norris, I'll crack you in the teeth. Look, I've been thinking. You've been thinking. (laughs) What won't they dream up next? Listen, Nora, I need more money. But I gave you five dollars this morning. Five dollars. Come out of the bush league, will you? I need real dough. Trixie, I haven't got it. I told you. Ed has. What about all the savings he's got stashed in the bank? That's for something else. And what's more important than your mother? I told you. If... Well, if there's a baby... A baby... Well, I'll be. Now, listen, kid. That bank account, it's in both your names, huh? Yes, but I don't see what that's got to you do with it. You don't see. You don't see nothing. You know what that worm is doing to you? Take my advice, girl, and do something about it before you lose him. Before I lose him, Ed? I don't mean Milton Burrow. This boy's on the run. Oh, that's crazy. Is it? He's got a dame in every cottage on his milk route. You better wake up and face You it. keep saying that, and it isn't true, I I know men, Nora. You're losing him, kid. You think he's working when he doesn't come home all day? I told you, he has to work in the dairy after he gets through to me. That's a fancy name for it, all right. Oh, I'd, I'd die if I lost Dad. I'd just die. Look, you want some good advice, kid? And so help me. I've seen it work time after time. Seen what work? When your man's getting away from you, Nora, there's one sure way to get him back. Make him sick, kid. That's the answer. Sick? I don't understand. All right, so I'll draw pictures. When a man's helpless, you can get to him, see? Mother him, nurse him, make him see how much he needs you. Yes, but... Uh, and when a man's sick, he is helpless. You get it? Yes, but it isn't sick. He's stronger than us. Oh, there's ways to... Well, to make people sick, you know. There are. Get me some of that rye out of the cupboard like a good girl, and I'll tell you just how this thing goes. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney continues in a moment, but first, here's your opportunity to help put your favorite unsung football player into the limelight to give your college recognition by voting for its outstanding player. 
All you have to do is cast your vote in Harry Wismer's exciting campaign to select the all-college, all-America football team. Voting is going on right now. You can learn all about it on the Sports 10 program heard every weeknight. The campaign is a chance for little-known players of any college, large or small, to achieve the prized rank of All-America. But every fan must do his part and cast his vote. You'll want to round up all the ballots you can for your favorite. So tell all your friends to listen to Harry Wismer's Sports 10 program for complete details. Your college can gain national honors through your selection for the All-College All-America football team. Don't miss this chance to let your opinions be heard in a national campaign. Learn all the details of the All-College All-America football team selection on Harry Wismer's Sports 10 program, heard every weeknight over most of these stations. Hey, wait a second, will you? What's your hurry? Huh? Oh, it's you. I thought it was a beautiful morning. Oh, now, that's no way to greet an old friend, Trixie. Look, up. Harrington, I report to you on Mondays. This is Wednesday. Stop following me, will you? I'm not tailing you, Trixie. I was just standing here on the corner. You pass by, that's all. It's okay to say hello to a pal, ain't it? You and me, pal. <laughs> well, ain't we? You know you old goat. It's too bad you're a cop. We might hit it off at that. Yeah, we might. Are you still living with your daughter, Trixie? And why not? No reason. I'm just interested, that's all. Sure, I'm living with her. Her and her husband. Should I tell you a secret, Harrington? If you want it. We bought a press, see? Huh? We're making three dollar bills. No kidding. Buy the basket full, copper. Uh, drop up sometime. I'll give you a fistful and you can put it on a horse. Oh. <laughs> you playing the horses these days? <laughs> Funny, aren't you? <laughs> Rule for 94, people on pro don't gamble. Do they, Harrington? So you're really hitting the old straight and narrow, huh, Trixie? Buy me a beer sometime and maybe I'll tell you all about it. You know, I think you would at that. You're quite a girl, Trixie. Oh, I'll bet you say that to all your pro kids. Mm. Go on back to the DA, Sonny, and tell him little Trixie is flying high, see? High, wide, and straight, get it? I'll tell him, Trixie, and you know he'll be glad to hear it. That's right. Well, see you around. Yeah, sure, Trixie. You'll see me around. Street corners, middle of the block, practically any place that you happen to be. Dear, everything's on the table. Trixie, no, I'm scared. Call him, you little fool. Oh, Ed, dear, dinner. I, I can't. You want him back, don't you? Well, don't you? Yes. You put the stuff in his milk the way I told you? Answer me, Nora. Yes, yes, I did. Then don't you worry. Uh, Ed, dear, I said dinner. Coming. Trixie, I can't do it again. Shut up. My goodness, Ed, everything will be cold. Golly, Nora, it looks wonderful. Oh, just look at those chops. Come to a turn. Isn't she a wonder, Mother Norris? Oh, yes, come on now. Eat it before it gets cold. Oh, sure thing. Uh, pass the butter, will you, Mother Norris? Certainly. Here um, you are. You, um... Hmm? Are you going to drink your milk now? Well, now and later, honey. <laughs> That's the way I always kid waitresses, Mother Norris. They say, you want your beverage now? And I always say, now and later, kiddo. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> now and later. <laughs> yeah. I'll bet you kid him all right, Ed. <laughs> Don't you, Nora? <laughs> what? Hey, what's the matter tonight, honey? You're as quiet as a mouse. Ed, don't, don't you want tea? I, I could make you a cup of tea. Tea? Oh, now, honey, you know I don't like tea. Don't nag him, dear. Ed likes milk. After all, he delivers the stuff. Yes, sir. Hey, I don't... Nora, for Pete's sake, what's eating? Don't you? drink that milk. Now, what are you so upset about, child? Don't, don't drink my milk. But, honey, it's hey, good milk. Nora, 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 shut up. It is poison. She made me put poison in it. What? Ed, that isn't true. She, uh, she isn't herself. She doesn't much to say. It is true, I tell you. Ed, don't drink it. Don't. Let me see this Ed, milk. Ed, no. Well, it is better. There is something in this glass. Don't be a fool, Ed. Sit down. Answer me, Nora. What's this all about? Nora. She made me do it. Which made me sick. Sick? So I could nurse you back to health. She says she don't love Shut me. Shut up, you little fool. Shut up. Ed, don't listen to her. What do you think you can do? I, please. 
My neck like two. Answer me. Answer me, Nora. Tell me what this is all about. Ask me no All right, funny boy, you ask for it. Oh, oh. Oh, Trixie, you hit him. Shut up. <laughs> Ed. Oh, darling, listen to me. Ed. Trixie, his head is... He's pleading Trixie. Get out of my way. Here, here let me see him. Oh, Trixie. Quiet. Trixie. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead all right. Oh, hell, I said. Oh, here, here, what you off? Oh, you killed him. You hit him with an iron door. I said. Please. You killed him. You shut up. Now, you do what I say, you hear? You're in this too, don't forget. Come on now. Help me drag him over to that fireplace. Uh, Hurry, Nora. <laughs> You, you killed him. We, oui, kid. Don't forget that. You put the stuff in his milk. Now, here. He put his head up against that andiron. Uh, he fell, you get it? He fell and hit his head on the fireplace uh, andiron. Ed. Wait a minute. Blood. Yeah, there should be blood on the andiron. Here we are. Hold still, Ed, my boy. We'll just wipe a little blood over here. Oh. There. Does it? Hmm, perfect. I can't, I can't go through with it. Sister, you better, that's all. There was poison in that glass of milk he tried, you know. And you put it there, baby. But it's murder, Trixie, it's murder. It's going to be all right, see? From now on, you do everything Mother says. Trixie, open up and, and tell us what really happened. I told you a dozen times. He got mad while we were having our dinner. He uh, he sat there, Trixie? Yes, sir, right there. Order a picture of that chair, Miss Miller, will you? I will, Chief, as soon as Ray gets here. Go on, Trixie. So Ed gets mad, huh? And then what? Well, he got up and started for Nora. She was standing in front of the fireplace, weren't you, dear? Yes, yes, I was. So Nora ducked. Ed fell against the fireplace, and when he went down, he cracked his head on that andiron. Right, Trixie? Right. Uh, you can see the blood yourself. Uh, on the andiron, you mean? Oh, look for yourself. Yes, I did, Trixie. Uh, put that on Ray's list, too, Miss Miller. Right, Chief. Well, Chief, now what? I want the body sent to the morgue, Harrington, as soon as the photographers are through. Check. Tag it, will you, Miss Miller? Yeah, got it made out. I, uh, I want to go over this room thoroughly, Harrington. Tell Brophy we'll need prints and pictures all the way through. Yeah, right. Uh, what about Trixie and Nora, Chief? You want me to take them in? Why, uh... Take us in? And what for, I'd like to know. Just because I'm on pro, you cops think... All right, right, Trixie, all right, quiet down. Well... Nothing to get excited about. I'm not taking you in. Huh? That's better. Well, but you... Uh, later, Harrington. Uh, let's get the apartment checked first, and then we'll decide what's to be done. Uh, in the meantime, Trixie... Yeah? You understand you and Nora are to stay here. Just a formality, but... See that you do. Yeah, I'll leave a man downstairs, Chief. Right. And now let's get started. We have a lot of work to do. Trixie, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Look, Nora. Look, come on, child. Now, and now look up. Oh, here, put your head back. Oh, Trixie, I loved him so. I only wanted to make him sick. You'll be all right, kid. I won't let anything happen. You know that. But Trixie, after all, you're all I've got. we got to stick together, oh. baby. You and old Trixie. Where do we go? What do we do? I loved him so. And now I feel lost. No, we'll make up. Here. You and him had this bank account, didn't you, Nora? You know we did. Well, then it's simple, kid. We just take the dough and we'll, we'll make a trip. Yeah, that's it. A nice long trip so we can forget all about this. Maybe Canada would be nice this time of year. On Ed's money? Our money, girl. Well, look, you deserve it, honey. And, and with me standing by to help you, what well, say, things will be just fine. Oh, gee. Yes. 
Yes, yes, Harrington. Yeah, Brophy's back from the Taylor apartment. Mm-hmm. He's got the andirons with him, just the way you said. Good. Put a tag on them, William Smiller. Oh, right away, Chief. Oh, and one thing more. Yes? I asked Brophy to bring down some other things from the apartment, Miss Miller. A tag everything, and I'll be out to check it in a moment. Right, Chief. Other things, Chief? Yes, it may not be much, Harrington. The fact is, I'm trying to be sure... Oh, excuse me. Yes? Oh, yes, Skippy. What did the doctor find? Oh, Oh, I see. No, no, I hadn't expected that. Yes, ask him to send his report up at once, will you please? Yes, thanks. What, the autopsy report on Taylor, Chief? A surprising report, I'd say. They found evidence of poison in his stomach, Harrington. What? Yes, not enough to cause death, however. They blow on the head and did that. Poison? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll be... Well, okay, Chief, should I go get her? Trixie, this clinches it, doesn't it? Well, I wish it did, but frankly, I'm not sure. But, Chief... No, we'll wait, I think. I still want to examine everything Brophy brought down here. Then we'll be sure. Mr. District Attorney continues in a moment, but first... We are at the beginning of rough winter weather... Now is the time to make certain that your car is in tip-top shape for the months ahead. Check up and see if the brakes would hold if you had to stop in an emergency. See if both headlights are working and set at the proper height. And don't forget to check on the taillights at the same time. And those tires, are all four sturdy enough to protect you against a blowout? Check up now. On the average, one out of every three cars has at least one mechanical defect. You know, you can't be safe if your car is unsafe. And don't be fooled by thinking your car is in good condition just because it's a new model. Some parts wear out rather quickly, and failure to keep cars in good condition is one of the basic causes of accidents. So, for the protection of yourself, the folks who ride with you, and those you may meet in traffic, keep your car in safe driving shape. Make frequent, regular checkups and fix-ups a rule. Check your car and check accidents. Remember, the life you save may be your own. This message is brought to you as a public service. Oh, don't be so stubborn, Nora. After all, I know how to handle money. But, Trixie, it was his savings. I haven't got the right... Right, right. Will you get it through your thick head that he's dead? That money belongs to us. I wish I could be sure what to do. I'll tell you what, sure, young lady. Unless you do what I tell you, you'll end up with a murder rap on you. But, Trixie, I... Poison, remember? Now, get smart, kid. Draw that dough out of the bank, and as soon as the DA gives us the word, we'll head for Canada. I... I can't do it. Why, you... I ought to beat some sense into you. Trixie, who's that? Cops, probably. They'll swarm all over the joint until they're satisfied. Well... It's you again, huh? I just thought I'd keep you company, Trixie. Haven't you got a home? Feeling better, Nora? She's okay. Uh, go on in and lie down, dear. No, uh, stay here, Nora. Matter of fact, I, I'd like to ask you a few questions. You did. You asked me so many. Well, I'm curious, Nora. You don't mind, do you? After all, your... Well, your husband's death was an accident, wasn't it? You're darn right it was. Uh, was it, Nora? I told you. Well, come on, tell me again, Nora. It was an accident, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Leave me alone. And, uh, wait a minute. The poison we found in his stomach. That was an accident, too, Nora. The poison? Trixie. Nora, go inside. Go on. No, no, no. Stay here, Nora. Uh, What about the poison, kid? Did Trixie slip it to him? You're crazy. Did she, Nora? Did Trixie get him the poison? Did she? Come on now. Tell the truth, Nora. I'd hate to see you get stuck for something that you didn't do. Don't you say anything, Nora. Well, you might just as well, Nora, because we know all about it anyway. The poison and everything. Did she give it to him? Nora, did you let her poison your husband? Did you... Oh, stop it! Stop it! I did it! Huh? Nora, shut up! I put it in his milk. That's the truth. I did it. I did it. I well, did it. now ain't that into it. Stand still, Trixie. You stinking little... Save it, save it. Let's go down to uh, get your hat and I brush. did it. I did it. Isn't that enough? I did Come in. Oh, Harrington. Well, I'm glad you're here. Oh, it's all sewed up, Chief. Mm-hmm. Come on, Nora. Get your hat. Harrington, you mean Nora did it? She just admitted it, Miss Miller. 
Nora's ready to talk, Chief. She put the poison in Ed's milk. Oh, is that right, Nora? Nora, don't talk. Yes, I did. I told you I did. All set, Chief? Why, yes, Harrington. I think we're all set. Take Trixie downtown and book her. What? Trixie? Mm-hmm. Me? Well, you're crazy. You just heard the kid. Oh, I heard her, Trixie. And undoubtedly, she did put something into Ed's milk. Sure, Chief. Like I said. Yes, but that didn't kill Ed Taylor, Trixie. You did. What? There's what? a car downstairs, Harrington. This case is closed. <laughs> Mr. District Attorney continues in a moment, but first, Mutual believes that if something is good, then there should be more of it. In keeping with this policy, you can now hear six different new variety programs. There's Joe King, the MC with a smile in his voice, who interviews guest celebrities, including some of the biggest names in the entertainment world. For everyone interested in food, and that includes the whole family, famed expert Duncan Hines offers choice tidbits on table and travel topics. The mutual sports voice who needs no introduction, Al Helper, presents interviews and interesting anecdotes about the top personalities in the field of sports. And David Ross, veteran broadcaster, turns the spotlight on Americana with salutes to famous anniversaries. One of the best known and best loved of actors, Edward Arnold, gives a great performance as the storyteller. And two quick-witted favorites, Arlene Francis and Bill Cullen, join talents to bring a program of smiles. Yes, sir, for something new and different, why not just stay tuned to your favorite mutual station? You can hear them all every weekday over most of these stations. Back now for Mr. District Attorney. Taylor, ladies and gentlemen, Trixie will pay the full penalty demanded by law. And this time, her career is really over. Yeah, and Nora, Chief, what about her? Well, for her complicity in the crime, Nora will be sentenced, Harrington, but I think the court will be lenient. Perhaps even suspend sentence. Well, I'm glad, Chief. I think she's learned her lesson. I, mm. I don't think you'll have any more trouble from her. No, nor do I, Miss Miller. Actually, Nora was the victim of a hardened criminal type, her foster mother, Trixie Norris. Foster mother? Yes, Trixie wasn't Nora's real mother, Harrington. As a matter of fact, Nora was an orphan. Years ago, as we know now, Trixie took Nora in off the streets, took her in as a child to train her in a criminal career. Uh, just how were you sure it was Trixie who murdered Ed, Chief? Well, she was very clever, Miss Miller, but she made one mistake. She hit Ed with that iron door stop, you see, the one I had Brophy bring down to the office for examination. And under the microscope, you found blood on it, huh, Chief? Mm-hmm. Blood that they didn't get off with that rag. Yes, that's right, Harrington, and that, I admit, was a stab in the dark, ordering an examination of any heavy, blunt object in the room. Uh, but the andiron really proved it, didn't it, Chief? Yes, it did, Miss Miller. Trixie was clever enough to smear blood from Ed's head onto the andiron, but what she forgot was hair. Hair? Yes, strands of hair, Harrington. If he'd fallen against the andiron the way Trixie said he had, there would have been hair as well as blood on its surface. And as you know, there wasn't. And that was that. last program in the current series of Mr. District Attorney broadcasts. Next week at the same time over most of these same stations, Mutual presents Counter Spy, a program designed to help investigate and combat the enemies of our country both at home and abroad. Be sure to listen then.
program came to you transcribed. Colorful San Francisco awakens the entire West Coast with that passable of peppy persuaders, the Breakfast Gang, who welcome the invitation to join you in greeting the dawn each Monday through Saturday morning at 7.15. It's the program designed to start your day off at the right tempo. So be sure you hear the Breakfast Gang tomorrow morning and each Monday morning, Monday through Friday morning at 7.15. Stay tuned now for the latest news on the newspaper of the air with John Holbrook, which follows immediately. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.